Grade 6 Math, number 2.1. This chapter we're doing decimal operations. I'm going to add and subtract decimals. The most important rule is you keep your decimal points lined up in perfect or end up adding and subtracting the wrong place values and numbers. See? If our decimal point's here and we line it up like this, we add, end up adding straight up and down and we get the wrong answer. We have to remember that even if there's an empty space, we have to line our decimal points up all nice and pretty, okay? In the place values, we can see that a number that is just six could have invisible zeros here. And you remember my favorite rule? I say this over and over and over again. In math, zeros have no value. They're just placeholders. So we're going to use zeros as placeholders when we subtract decimals more than anything else. When we add and subtract decimal numbers, we can use zeros to the right side of the decimal point, to this side of the decimal point, okay? And we can use them as placeholders. And it's very helpful when subtracting a decimal from a whole number. So if it was just 6, and we had to subtract 1.76, by putting our placeholders there, we now have a number that looks like 600 minus 176, and we do it no different than if the decimals weren't there. We just make sure that they're lined up all nice and pretty and straight and perfect so that we keep our place values in the right place. See? It'll help us regroup and rename from the next place value. If, if those zeros weren't there, it would be hard to borrow, wouldn't it? If it's missing one or two, it doesn't matter. You put in as many zeros as you need to help you do the answer, okay, to find the answer. We don't really need to add zeros when adding decimal numbers if we don't want to, as long as we keep our decimal points lined up perfectly. We could put a zero there if we wanted to, but we don't have to. If we're adding these two, as long as the decimal points are lined up pretty and perfect, we can just drop the two down, see? And even in this situation, if we're not renaming or regrouping that particular number, we don't need to really put a zero there. We can just go straight down. We know there's nothing there. We know it would be a zero. You could put it there if you want to. It's just not necessary. So just as with non-decimal addition and subtraction, we can use the inverse operations to check our answers for errors. For addition, you just subtract the sum from an addend to see if it matches the other addend. And for subtraction, we add the difference to the subtrahen to see if it equals the minuend. So if you don't remember your basic subtraction problems, in a subtraction problem, this is the minuend, this is the subtrahend, and this is the difference. See? MSD. So all you have to do is, sub is add the difference and the subtrahend and see if it equals the minuend. And with the addition one, you just spin it around and take away, you know, for subtraction. To check addition, we do subtraction, and we just spin it around and see if it equals the other number. See? No different than if there was no decimal there. We can estimate just as we would with non-decimal numbers. Just put the decimal in. If you have 1.9, pretend like the decimal point isn't there. We can round 19 to 20, and we can round 8 to 10, and we get 3 point nothing. See? It's an e even 3. If we have 19 and 97 hundredths plus 4 and 89 hundredths, we can pretend like the decimal point's not there and just round them up, or we can do it as if it was money, like this was $19.97 and we're rounding it up to $20, see? And $4.89 was rounding up to $5. Our estimate would be about $25, see? And if you're estimating subtraction, it's no different than if the decimal point wasn't there. We can round this to 300 and this to 100 and say the subtraction is about 200 or 0.2, really, because the zeros aren't necessary. They're just placeholders. Even if we're going way into the ten thousandths, we can do the same thing. We can round 69 ten thousandths to 7 thousandths. See? Just take the zeros off. 
and we can round 18 ten thousandths to two thousandths. See? And our answer for subtraction would be five thousandths. When using variables, make sure the decimal points are lined up and add as many zeros to the right of the decimal point as needed, just like we've been doing. So if it says a plus 3.14, 3 and 14 hundredths, and a is equal to 12, well, if we're adding, we don't really need to put zeros there if we don't want to, but we could. If it makes your life easier, you can just put them there. But you're just going to drop the 14 anyway, aren't you? And for subtraction, you are going to want to put the zero there because you might need to rename or regroup, right? So if you have b minus 7.1 and b equals 15, you might have to put a zero in the tenths place to help you so that you can regroup and take one from it. See? If you're dealing with a number like 23 and 77 hundredths minus x and x is equal to 6, you don't really need the zeros, do you? Just plug the 6 into the equation and do your subtraction. If you've got 803 hundred thousandths, which is what this is, minus y, and y is equal to five hundredths, or no, this is five uh, thousandths, hard to say. Just make sure your decimal points are lined up, and you can just drop them down as you would in any other number if it was like that, see? Just make sure your decimal points are lined up, see? So that's how we add and subtract decimals. Just keep your decimal point in the right place and you'll be home free. That, that is the hardest thing about all of this is just lining up your decimal points and putting zeros where you need to as placeholders, okay? Because that's my favorite rule. Zeros have no value, but they're just good placeholders, okay? See you next video. I'm going to talk about multiplying these guys, all right? And we'll talk about hopping.